In Lesson 10-2, you're going to be learning about the measures of variability. And you'll be able to find the measures of variability and use those measures to interpret and analyze data. The essential question for Chapter 10 is, how are statistics used to draw inferences about and compare populations? In the middle of page 440, you have two of your definitions. There are seven definitions for this particular lesson, but it starts off with measures of variability, which are used to describe the distribution of the data. And then one of the measures is range. And the range of a set of data is just the difference between the greatest and the least values of the set. And this just tells us how far the data are spread out or clustered together. In example one, you're shown that you can be given data in a graph form or just numerically. In either case, you're going to be identifying the largest value and the smallest value and then subtracting. So for got it 1a at the bottom of page 440, the smallest value on our chart here is 33, our largest is 58, and 58 minus 33 is 25. In 1b, we have some numbers there. The largest is 25 and the smallest is 9. 25 minus 9 is 16. That's pretty easy to find the range. Before we get to example 2, you have this graph on your note sheet and I want you to fill in the vocabulary words. Median, we talked about last lesson. That's the middle number of the data points. And then we have what's called the upper half and the lower half. And the median of the lower half is called the first quartile, or Q sub 1. The median of the upper half is called the third quartile, or Q sub 3. So make sure you understand that before moving on. Fill in your chart and review that. The next vocabulary word is interquartile range. And that just means the middle half of a data set. So if we're looking at quartile 1 and quartile 3, this is the inner quartile range right here. And the way we find that is just we take quartile 3 minus quartile 1, and then we get that inner quartile range. Okay? So moving on down to example 2, what you want to do when you're trying to find the measure of variability for the data is you want to start by finding the range, like we did in example 1. We're just going to subtract the two numbers to find the range. Then we're going to order the data from least to greatest, Remember, that's how we find the median. And then we're going to take a look at the first quartile and the third quartile. And we're going to use those to uh, find the measures of variability. So let's scroll down to example two. I've already done some of the work for you, but I'd like for you to pause the video and make sure you get this written down in your notes. So when you're finding the measures of variability for the data, the first thing you're going to do is find the range. That's the easy part. Not that the rest of it's hard, but start by the range. The highest number in the data is 53, and the smallest number is 25. 53 minus 25 is 28. The second step is to order the data from least to greatest. Okay? Notice that we have an even number of data points, and so I have to make sure and say that the median is halfway between those two points, halfway between 40 and 44 is 42. And then I'm going to use the numbers to the left of that median, 40 down to 25, and I'm going to find the median of that to get the first quartile. And notice there's an even number of data points, and so my median is going to be right here. The quart first quartile is going to be in between 38 and 39, which is 38.5. And then my third quartile is going to be 44 over to the highest data point, 53. So between 45 and 49, which is 47. Okay. If you need to re-watch this section on how to find the measures of variability, please do so. Start by finding the range, line up the data values, and then split them up, and then find the medians for those first and third quartiles. For the next example on page 442, the top of page 442, you have one more vocabulary word, outliers. Any data that is more than one and a half times the value of the interquartile range beyond the quartiles is called an outlier. 
So again, in the example, we're given steps, step one, two, and three. I'm going to follow those same steps in my example. And step one says to find the interquartile range. Well, the nice thing about the example is that it was already set up for you in order from least to greatest. And the example below in the got it section is not. So first, make sure that all of them are listed from least to greatest and that you're able to identify the median and then the first quartile and the third quartile. Okay, so down here on question number three, take a deep breath because there's going to be quite a few steps. But again, pause it, re-listen, re-watch, and make sure you get all of this in your notes. So for number three, when it says to find any outliers, the first thing we're going to make sure is that all of the data is organized from least to greatest. So I took this data in the chart and I lined it up from least to greatest. Notice that there's an even number of data points, and so I calculated the median. 112.5 is between 110 and 115. Then I took everything in the lower section. That's four values, and so I had to find the median of those four values, which was right between here, 100 and 105. Okay, And then I took the four values of the upper end, and found that 120 and 120, the third quartile is 120. So the example gave you all of that for you, but in the got it problem, you have to figure out that for yourself in order to find out number one, which is the interquartile range. Where did that interquartile range come from? It was this 120 and this 102.5. So the interquartile range is 17.5. Then, looking up here, it says step two, multiply that interquartile range by 1.5. So 17.5 times 1.5 is 26.25. Then, step three, it says to take the first quartile minus 26.25, and I got 76.25. And then it says to take the third quartile plus the interquartile range, and when I did that, I got 146.25. So my data should be between 76.25 and 146.25, and from that information, I see that 155 lies on the outside of that range, and so 155 is our outlier. Again, lots of steps, but go ahead and re-watch it, re-listen to it, and work through that example to make sure you understand how to find the outliers. Last example, because we're going to do the other one together in class, example 5, uh, page 442, example 4. It just, again, shows you some data right here, and it says to use measures of variability to describe the data. Okay. So we're going to start by doing the range. The range, again, is probably the easiest one. We're just going to take the highest, subtract the lowest. So 59.99 minus 22.79. So for this particular problem, make sure that you list that. The range is $37.20. Number two, it says the median. Well, in order to find the median, you have to line up the data from least to greatest, which I did right here. And there's an even number of data, so I had to add 32.5 plus 34 to get the median, which is 33.25. Number three, the first quartile is taking everything to the left of the median. And then right here, that blue arrow there, what's between 24.95 and 29.25? Well, it's 27.10. For number four, the third quartile is taking everything to the right of the median. In this case, what's between 44.76 and 44.99? It's 44.88. Use your calculator to double check that. Add them together and divide by two. And then the last thing to do is to uh, subtract those. 44.88 minus 27.10, and it's 17.78. Okay, so the the interquartile range here for this problem is 1778. So in this case, you could say this statement right here, 
the cost of the video games for half of the video games is in the interval of 2710 down to 4488. Okay, so let me just turn on the answer key here so you can kind of see how that's written out. The price for half of the games is in the interval of 2710 to 4488. Okay, so that makes sense. In between the first quartile and the third quartile, that's half of the items. Lots of vocabulary words. We're definitely going to be doing more of these together in class, but make sure you understand this and try your homework, and if you need extra help, just ask.